So whenever we are talking about determining the level of antimicrobial agents activity, uh, we need to apply certain tests that can show how effective a particular type of antimicrobial agent or an antibiotic is against um, the colony of bacteria that we are testing. So in today's lecture, which is uh, this in the first section, we'll be discussing the antimicrobial agent's effectiveness. Um, there are a number of tests that can help us uh, identify if a bacteria is more resistant or more susceptible to a type of uh, antimicrobial agent that is usually used to stop its growth or to limit its growth. Uh, we uh, by now know the concept of the minimal uh, inhibitory concentration and the minimum bacteriostatic concentration. Both of these levels are actually um, the crucial points uh, on which we can, um, you know, on which the tests are usually based because um, uh, whether you're using broth or agar to grow your bacteria, at the end of the day, what you're more concerned about is the uh, amount of uh, um, uh, antimicrobial agent that is required to stop the growth or to inhibit the growth. And uh, obviously we are talking about the minimum amount because uh, sometimes if you're using more amount of antimicrobial agent to stop the growth, you might stop the growth, but you can damage um, uh, the, the surface or you can damage uh, the person who's taking the antimicrobial agents or the antibiotics to treat a particular type of uh, uh, bacteria that's growing inside him. So we need to identify the safe zone in which the antimicrobial agent can be effective enough to stop the growth of the bacteria, but not toxic for the surface or for the uh, person or the host um, who's taking the antimicrobial agent. So in this particular section, We'll talk about the antimicrobial agent effectiveness by uh, using a test which is known as dilution susceptibility test. Um, as the name suggests, this test basically help us uh, identify the minimum concentration. We keep on diluting um, until we find a level beyond which uh, or after diluting which uh, the antimicrobial agent loses its ability to um, stop the growth. Um, there are two further tests in a dilution susceptibility test that are the broad dilution test and the agar dilution test. Um, there are certain bacteria uh, that grows more uh, that grows better on the liquid medium as opposed to the uh, solid agar, while others require a solid uh, substrate to grow properly on. So uh, the dilution tests are, or the principle behind the dilution test is similar, but the broth and agar depends on the type of bacteria or the colony of bacteria that you need to grow. So starting with the determination of antimicrobial agent uh, effectiveness, um, this is essential for proper therapy, as I've suggested uh, earlier. Whenever you're talking about an antimicrobial agent, you're talking about um, uh, killing a type of bacterial growth, uh, especially we are more concerned about the bacteria that grows inside a person's or, a, or, or an organism's body. So whenever you're talking about um, uh, using an antimicrobial agent to stop the growth in the host, uh, you need to determine the minimum amount that is required that is that can stop the growth but cannot be toxic to the host. And so it's essential for the proper therapy of a person to know the exact uh, amount that is ideal uh, and that can actually uh, stop the growth of bacteria without damaging the cells. So the testing that we usually apply to check the um, antimicrobial agent effectiveness can show which agents are most effective against the pathogen. As I've said earlier, there are certain pathogens that can be readily killed or their growth can be readily stopped by using an antimicrobial agent, but there are others that can be 
um, uh, resistant to it and can resist even a high dosage of that particular antimicrobial agent. So the testing uh, before um, using or before um, sending an antimicrobial agent to the market is important and crucial because you need to determine its lethal dose, you need to determine its MIC, um, it's MBC and uh, you need to determine the set of pathogens that it can actually work against. So this gives a, a proper estimate of a therapeutic dose, which is the ideal dose that can kill the uh, microbe without damaging the host. So uh, whenever we are talking about um, selecting a particular type of antibiotic, we uh, the first thing that we need to understand is the type of pathogen that you need to uh, that you are um, targeting. Um, after knowing the pathogen, so that's why usually whenever you uh, go to the doctor uh, or see a doctor, the first thing that he uh, usually do is get a test of or get a sample for testing before prescribing the antibiotics usually or uh, usually give you a wide wider range of antibiotics so that if there are a number of pathogens that are present that can cause a particular problem then the antibiotic should cover uh, all, all the range of uh, the, the pathogens. So uh, whenever you're determining the type of antibiotic you need to use, um, the, initially you need to know the pathogen of interest. Uh, the antibiotic selection is then dependent on the pathogen. Um, then there is a fractional factorial design, which means that um, you need to understand and identify if a particular antimicrobial agent itself is sufficient enough, or if uh, you need to make a cocktail um, of antimicrobial agent which can um, act together, have a synergistic activity and can kill the pathogen. And um, usually cocktails are given to increase the range of pathogens that um, need to be killed because like I said earlier, uh, we are not usually talking about a very pure colony in which only one type of pathogen is growing, rather there are usually a number of species in um, a particular surface, so we need to have a wider ranged antibiotic. So uh, <clears throat> in dilution susceptibility test, uh, the MIC and MLC values are used um, or uh, the testing is used to determine the MIC and MLC value. The antibiotic dilution test can be done in both agar and broth. So this depends on the type of bacteria uh, that is to be grown. Um, it can be in broth or in agar. As the name suggests, we are talking about the dilution, which means that um, we are talking about diluting the amount of antimicrobial agent um, in broth or in agar, and then we see the minimum amount um, in which there is uh, uh, the in which there no growth can be seen. So as you can see, when you're decreasing the um, antimicrobial agent beyond that amount. Uh, when you're decreasing it, there is growth that can be easily seen in uh, the broth. But when you increase it, there is no growth. So the minimum amount, as the figure shows in this case, is um, 2 micrograms per ml. This is the amount in which um, no bacteria is growing. And beyond this, that is when you uh, lower the concentration of antimicrobial agent further, um, to one microgram per ml, you can see that growth can be seen. So the MI, uh, MIC is the standard point, uh, decreasing the level of antimicrobial agent beyond this point will cause growth. So then usually what we do is we inoculate from the MIC cultures into antimicrobial free agents to see if there is bacterial growth. And usually there is bacterial growth because MIC in MIC, there is a minimum inhibitory concentration, which means that um, the antimicrobial agent is not entirely killing the pathogens that are present, but rather stopping their growth. So to determine the uh, minimum bacteriostatic concentration, uh, what we usually do is we take um, a sample or an inoculum from the MIC and then we inoculate it in a broth that is free of any antimicrobial agent um, just to see that um, uh, there is a, whether there is a growth or not and beyond which point uh, the growth is stopped. So 
Um, in broad dilution test, uh, we are again using MIC uh, to determine if um, uh, to determine the effective if, uh, effectiveness or the activity of an antimicrobial agent. Uh, the lowest concentration of antibiotic, uh, which result in no growth after 16 to 20 hours of incubation, is the minimum inhibitory concentration. So whenever we are talking about an MIC, it means that we have given sufficient time, that is 16 to 20 hours, to the antibiotic to stop the growth of uh, antimicrobial agent uh, or the microbes, because it's not uh, like you can apply the antibiotic and, and expect result or expect um, complete killing of bacteria right away. So there are a series of tubes that are used. Uh, the broth which is used in these tubes is called uh, Muller-Hinton broth. So this broth has all the um, required uh, salts and um, uh, all the required uh, minerals that can be needed by the bacteria to grow ideally. So this is an ideal broth that can readily um, help bacteria grow. Then um, the antibiotics are added to the broth in a range of 0.1 to 128. Um, so this, this basically uh, means that uh, the antibiotic range varies greatly and even a point difference of antibiotic um, can either uh, stop the growth or can let the bacteria grow. So it's very important to make the dilutions in such a way that you don't miss out the point which is the MIC. So even a point uh, increase, a point uh, of increase or decrease of antimicrobial agent matters in this case. And then they are inoculated with standard density of the test organism that needs to be checked. Um, if you look at the uh, figure, you can see that you take the cultured organism, then you grow them in broth, then you add them to the tubes. Tubes with increasing drugs concentrations are inoculated with the standard uh, number of organisms. So it is important to know that the number of organisms that you are taking is going to be the same for each tube, uh, no matter the concentration of uh, antimicrobial agents. And then you need to determine uh, beyond, uh, you need to determine the MIC, which is the minimum uh, drug concentration which will inhibit the bacterial growth. And um, when there is no visible growth, as you can see in this case, MIC is 8 microgram per ml. And uh, you just pick up colonies from there and you grow them um, again and the when you see a zone where there is no growth uh, when plated then that is the MBC which is the minimum drug concentration which actually kills the entire bacteria. So what we are doing is we are taking the colonies from all the um, uh, tubes and then we are plating them again and then the colony or the sample which shows no growth uh, is the amount of MBC, which in this case is the uh, is 16 micrograms per ml. So uh, this just shows what MLC is. If tubes showing no growth are cultured into fresh medium that lacks antibiotic, then the lowest antibiotic concentration from which a microbes do not subsequently grow is the MLC. Um, again, the figure shows how you can uh, check for um, the MIC and MLC and how the, uh, you can also use controls in which there can be no antibiotics to check the viability of uh, bacteria on agar plates. And um, in control 2, you can add no bacteria uh, to see that um, there's no uh, there's no other pathogen that's growing b beside your own pathogen of interest. So you can see that the bacterial uh, uh, once the bacterial colonies are inoculated, they are incubated, uh, usually at 35 to 37 degrees. That's the ideal condition for bacteria to grow. And once they're inoculated, um, they are incubated for uh, usually overnight, and then we can determine the MIC and MLC. Then the other test is the agar dilution test. It's pretty similar to the broad test because we are using the, uh, we are diluting again in this situation, but we are using plates. 
plates contain the uh, molar hinton uh, agar so the even the concentration of uh, the vitamins or minerals that are present in the broth remains the same but it's in the solidified form and some amounts of antibiotics are inoculated and then examined for growth so you can see that there can be plates with different amount of antibiotics and some of them will show various bacterial colonies growing on them and um, uh, obviously you can have control in this situation as well in which uh, you can use a plate with no antibiotic as a standard and you can use plate with no uh, inoculation of bacteria as a standard and then um, obviously there are other plates in which there are different concentrations of antimicrobial agents and the plate where there is no growth that can be seen um, that usually help us um, identify the antimicrobial agent's activity. So there are automated systems that are used for susceptibility testing and MIC determination in broth and agar. So uh, with the um, growth of science and with the growing technology, now there are automated systems that can read the MIC and MLC for you and you just have to insert the broth or, uh, or the plates or the tubes in the system and the the system will tell you the mi uh, the minimum inhibition concentration of a particular uh, antimicrobial agent and you can uh, then uh, take samples from there to determine the mbc as well so in this particular section we talked about one of the tests that is uh, required or that is commonly used to check the effectiveness of antimicrobial agents um, that's all from this section. Thank you for watching scadia.com.